My name is Senik Lajerev. I'm a professor of medical biotechnology at Albertia University. Recently, we have been doing some very exciting research. We have developed miniature human hearts which beat their own accord. They're just one millimeter in, in diameter, but uh, beat at the rate of 30 beats per minute. Doing experiments with human hearts is very difficult. Difficult to find patients and volunteers. And that's why we wanted to develop a test system where we can develop a model as close as possible to the real human hearts. And that's why we developed this human hearts from human stem cells, which we encouraged to differentiate as cardiomyocytes. These are the, the cells that build up our hearts. And, and surprisingly, these small miniature hearts, they beat and behave like uh, normal, but small hearts. Once we developed these uh, miniature hearts, we tried to cause diseases in them. For example, one of one such diseases is heart hypertrophy, which is a disease very often developed in people, uh, sometimes in young people who exercise a lot, and causes the heart wall to thicken and the heart septum to thicken, which results in sudden death. By developing this disease, we are now trying to test various drugs for their efficiency to prevent or to cure heart hypertrophy. We are very excited. We tested quite a few compounds which we believe might have any therapeutic effect. And one of them, which happened to be an anti-cancer drug, also has an effect in heart hypertrophy. It's, it's very easy to apply this drug to hearts. Unlike in humans, our hearts are grown in test tubes. So we just add the drugs to the media and we immediately can see and measure the effect on, on the hearts. What we want to see is drugs preventing heart from becoming hypertrophic. We, have, we are able to mimic the conditions in vitro, so to cause hypertrophy in this isolated miniature human heart. We not only study the effect of the drugs on the heart as a whole, bit rate and size, we want to see the molecular mechanism of action of these drugs. For that reason, we have developed biosensors, molecules which are embedded in the cardiomyocytes, which send us an uh, electromagnetic signal, light, when certain pathway is inhibited. In this way, we you know exactly where the drugs go in the cardiomyocytes and which pathway it is interfering with. Uh, we can measure now the effect of various drugs of the release of these molecules in, in the cardiomyocytes of the heart. Once we know exactly which compound work and which don't, we will begin developing new drugs which will then undergo further tests before eventually being trialed in humans. Although there is still a long way to go before the drugs become available commercially, we are extremely hopeful that we will one day be able to stop heart hypertrophy from developing in those at risk of the disease. I'm Professor Jim Bowne. I'm a professor of systems biology here at Abate. We've been working on uh, using mathematical and computational approaches to understand the link between individual cells and their behavior and how they might function in tissue structures, be that in uh, heart hypertrophy, as, as my colleague Nikolai showed, or indeed in cancer. Really, we're interested in how cells that have normal behavior and cells that have abnormal behavior um, work together within the body to, to, to uh, you know, result in various disease states. Um, the underlying approaches of characterizing the cell signaling pathways are the same. We've, we've developed a lot of the approaches for cancer and are now beginning to apply those over to the experimental system that uh, Nikolai showed. So the, the work that we do is founded at the cellular level on building computational models of the cell signaling pathways. Now, be they cancer cells or, or, or heart stem cells, actually a lot of the cell behavior is, is, is um, related. And really what we try and do is capture the way in which the, the cell responds through its layer of receptors to external signals coming from the rest of the body to drive the cell behavior. And by cell behavior, I mean whether the cell grows, uh, whether the cell divides, or whether it goes into its pre-programmed death once that cell has, has, has run its natural course. 
This model describes the set of processes by which the cell translates those input signals into, into behavior. And a very important thing is that we use experimental data from our partners at St Andrews and Edinburgh Universities to calibrate this model so that it has some grounding in, in the real cell system. So we take measures from cells, we, we apply drugs to those cells, we remeasure and try and understand how those cells are reacting to that particular drug. And that's actually the really neat thing about, about this area of, of, of research. It's a mix of experimental and the theoretical biology and it's a, it's a virtuous circle. So you start with some experiment you'd like to do, we then take the results of that and advise on the next experiment. And so it iterates so that you better understand the system that you're working with. And you're using the models to inform your next experiment and your next experiment to inform the models. And it cycles around.